But to look your enemy in the eye, knowing you'll remember his face for the rest of your life. Now that takes a stomach much stronger than you'll ever have. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to an episode, a special episode of Interregnum. Joining me today is Goafan, whom is the sole creator of Interregnum. Say hello, Goa. Hello, Goldukat. <laughs> hello. Uh, now, uh, I'm being treated to something a little bit special today, um, in the you respect are. that I am being given access to uh, Goa's beta. Now, uh, as you all know, or hopefully some of you know, um, a little while ago Goa released his first alpha version of Interregnum. Uh, that particular version uh, contained the Galactic Empire in addition to the stock races for Sins of a Solar Empire Rebellion. This particular mod, uh, the, well, this particular section of the mod that has been worked on, it contains, I'm going to show you here ladies and gentlemen, the Imperial Warlords, and that's what we're going to play as today, uh, so we can show you a little bit of what Go has been working on and how it's shaping up. Okay, well, I think we're going to jump into the game and I'm going to ask you a few questions while we go. All right. And we're loading in, ladies and gentlemen. Now, Interregnum is based uh, loosely around something called E4X, which is an earlier mod of yours, uh, isn't it, Goa? Yep. Now, I've just got a little piece of paper here that tells me uh, the first incarnation of E4X was way back in June 2012, and you've been working on it consistently since then, haven't you? Yeah, it was actually, uh, I guess, a bit after diplomacy started, so it was even before Rebellion when I was working on it. Yeah, it's it quite some time, isn't it, then? Yeah, I guess it's been two years now. Yep, your first um, Rebellion release was in January 2013. Yep, so that's about, I guess it was seven months before Rebellion was released or so. Yeah, that's right. So that's about right. And uh, your concept for E4X was basically uh, you weren't totally happy uh, with the way that Sin's Rebellion played out, were you? And you felt like you wanted to expand the universe and turn it into something that was as the title suggests, more 4X based. I mean, that's what the uh, official description is, sort of, yeah, but it actually was uh, a much smaller mod initially that I uh, intended, because before that, actually, uh, even in the Days of Entrenchment, which was uh, since first DLC, I actually got involved with an earlier Star Wars mod called Requiem. And I just started fiddling with it. I actually merged it with a popular planet mod called, uh, oh, what was it called? <sighs> Sins Plus, that was it. Ah, Sins Plus, yes. This is a very classic mod, so I wanted to add some new planets to that mod. And little did I know how far the modding rabbit hole was going to take me back then. Well, but, I, I think I speak for everybody when I say I'm very, very glad that it has. Oh, uh -huh. here we go. We are, we have actually begun now. But anyway, I actually started E4X when, in the cause of uh, modding Requiem, I discovered all sorts of cool little things that I could do uh, that I hadn't really seen mods take advantage of. So it was actually more of anything, a kind of a tech demonstration for it. I see. Uh, some new mechanics I figured out. Yeah, and you've got quite a lot of new mechanics um, in Interregnum. Uh, in, not in, just in Interregnum, in E4X. Uh, like, for example, I believe you've got the hero mechanic that we've been very, very fortunate to benefit from in Armada oh, yeah. 3. Yeah, that was actually the yeah. last sort of feature I made in the diplomacy version, and it just got carried over to Rebellion. Well, yeah, we're, was... we're, we're glad it has. Um, there were several other features that I was really impressed with um, when I downloaded it. Like, you basically did random events before random events, didn't you, Go? Uh, Coming about. I called them uh, random encounters at the time. They were a little bit different from the random events in uh, the Stellar Phenomenon. Those just happen randomly in-game. I sort of did it by, uh, you know, giving the... Uh, while you're exploring the map, you could find things like uh, already occupied planets with, you know, trader mining centers and, uh, you know, some advent forces looking for artifacts, that kind of thing. Yeah, I always find that really, really gratifying because it made the uh, it made the map, it made the uh, the universe, the galaxy, the solar system, whatever you'd like to call it, a little bit more of an alive place because it can seem quite dead, can't it? With the um, with the same things and the same forces always guarding the gravity wells. Yeah, you uh, 
memorize the little militia forces pretty uh you quick. do yeah the base uh. game and then you, I've also noticed that you've got certain things that uh, that float around planets, um, and you, in quite a clever way, you you've tied some of those to artifacts, haven't you? Oh yeah, the ancient structures. They were just sort of a way to make uh, exploration more rewarding because if you find some of the artifacts on your planet, you know, you can get some free, really powerful super weapons if you also capture the structures around your planets. That's right. And you kind of, um, you've taken all this knowledge and, and all this innovation through to Interregnum as well, haven't you? Um, was that always intended, that you would make uh, another mod on the back of E4X? Uh, it was intended pretty early. Uh, definitely by the time, you know, Heroes as a feature was actually always intended for Star Wars. But, you know, I needed to give the vanilla races Heroes if I was going to do that with the Star Wars races. Of course, so. yeah. So yeah, pretty soon once I realized, you know, E4X was going somewhere that, uh, you know, Requiem was, the idea was they wanted it to be uh, as close to the vanilla game as possible. And once I started messing around with that, I'm like, you know, the vanilla game is no longer good enough. I want to do some of these other cool things that I've orders, sir. Uh, figured out how to do. So yeah, from a pretty early point, Interregnum was planned even before Rebellion, I say. Although I didn't even have the name for it back then. <laughs> what brought you to the name Interregnum, if you don't mind me asking? Well, as I'm sure you know, but apparently it's not that common of a word. Uh, it means uh, sort of a period where, uh, you know, the king has died and there's uh, a period of time without a ruler. Mm -hmm. And it refers to the fact that in the sort of alternate story I made for this, you know, of course, Emperor Palpatine is killed at Endor and basically now we the mod's gonna eventually end up with 10 factions and none of them can really uh reunite the galaxy so we're so it refers to their struggle to sort of become the new legitimate power in the universe uh, i see so in the grim future there is only war not stolen uh yeah i came up with that myself <clears throat> of course <laughs> Gunship reporting. Gold Ducat will be sending the paperwork shortly to the Kardashian uh, trademark office. <laughs> I have a certain suspicion that Warhammer 40k might have something to say about that. Uh, Sadly. It's most unfortunate. Right, yes. we're, we're doing okay. We're taking a couple of worlds. I'm getting quite excited. Now, in this next... Um, system that I'm going to be going to, uh, there's actually a fortress constructor there, and that is uh, that is one oh, of yeah. these additions uh, by GoaFan, ladies and gentlemen, so I will show it to you once our vessels make it there. Uh, would, you, would you like to tell us about that at all? Oh uh, yeah, that's actually one of the, I guess technically it's a ship, but it belongs to the sort of ancient structures, those uh, super weapons powered by planetary artifacts we were just talking about, and... Uh, you might, uh, if you just open your research string, go to the artifacts tabs, you might notice that I've actually added a lot more artifacts. And you do as have far quite as a few that, in there. Yeah, there's eight more than the vanilla game had, and one of them will allow you to build basically the ultimate starbase at that system. That sounds quite exciting, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully I'll be able to do that. I'm not sure I'll, I'll make it for this episode, but uh, certainly worth a try. Now, um, you've already got two factions, well, uh, you've got one completed, uh, which is the Galactic Empire, and the then you have the Galactic Warlords. What do the Warlords bring to the table that the uh, Galactic Empire doesn't? Well, I suppose the first thing, I guess there's really all about uh, kind of research and uh, super weapons and customization, because the really unique feature is that if you go to the rank tab there in the research tree, Eventually in the game, you'll be able to choose uh, one of the four major warlords, that is, Imperials that basically, you know, have their own, control of their own territory. And you can ally with them and get some bonuses, some unique research, and oh, even a different Titan, basic, based on who you pick. Oh, I see. Well, here are the people that we have, ladies and gentlemen, because I'm on the research tab now. We have Grand Moff Ardus Kane, uh, who yep. we can join. We have Director Izan Izard. Uh, Izan Izard was an intelligence uh, 
operative or the leader of uh, imperial intelligence and she yep. kind of took control of, of the empire or at least part of the empire after the emperor died because uh, she didn't want it to slip away and she was a bit of an opportunist you also have uh, grand admiral thorn thrawn yep. excuse me i always say thorn uh, which had he, he's got quite a unique story because he was basically given leave to uh form his own um well space under his own control by the emperor yep. um because uh if you go into the expanded storyline, it was basically because they wanted to prepare for the Vong invasion. Yep. Uh, long story short. Uh, and you also have uh, Warlord Zinji. Hopefully I'm saying that Zinj, right. Actually. Yeah, I'm Zinj. not sure, honestly. I've always pronounced it Zinj, but there I'm not entirely sure that's <laughs> correct. Um, any of my viewers already know that I say practically everything incorrectly, so uh, they'll, they'll be used to this. Okay. It says, uh, intentionally flamboyant... Um, to throw off his opponent's judgments about him, as uh, Zinji is a skilled military leader who created his own empire. Um, so whereabouts did he kind of fit into the great scheme of things? Uh, well, he's a pretty well-known guy in the Expanded Universe. He was the main villain in the X-Wing series of books and comic books, and uh, I'm not sure of the dates actually on those, but uh, but his story is pretty similar in the interregnum version of things just that you know of course he's uh they all have darth vader to deal with so they do maybe a little do. bit more gutsy than uh <laughs> they might have been yeah and that's where your your storyline um it differs uh, quite radically from i suppose you would call it standard uh uh star wars doesn't it because the other stock races are still involved and that's one thing that's uh, that's uh, unique about this star wars mod if you will it's it's not what i would call a total conversion it's uh, basically a huge uh, vast reaching addition uh to stock sins uh as well as stock sins with uh, all the upgraded attributes that you found in E4X, you've also got Star Wars races, uh, yep. which is quite exciting. And, and you've come up with um, basically a whole storyline uh, that deals with how and why uh, they are all occupying the same space. Would you like to go through that in uh, some brief detail for us? Well, I guess just to summarize the story, uh, as you hopefully know, if you've seen the intro video to Rebellion, uh, one of the races there, the Vasari, has been fleeing for 10,000 years from some unknown force that's persuade, that's following them. Uh, the only known Vasari to ever actually see this enemy went insane, uh, so they weren't able to get any information. So it's heavily implied in the next game that uh, the Sins factions are in sort of a fight or flight response. Mm -hmm. So for the story of this mod, they choose flight. They actually discover an unstable wormhole. No idea where it leads, but they just know it's going to uh, disappear by the time they, uh, whatever this faceless enemy that we'll probably find in Sense 2 uh, is going to get there. So they oh, work I out see. a truce and actually blindly go through the wormhole and it just so happens to go to the Star Wars universe and they totally wreak havoc with everything. They do. Um, like the, there are some like there are some big key differences in the storyline. For example, uh, in this mod, that this is post the Emperor's death, but Darth Vader is still alive, isn't he? Yes. Uh, it's actually the what I call the Triple Alliance, which is the implied uh, alliance of the TEC loyalist Advent Rebels and Vasari Rebels. Mm -hmm. Actually, end up winning the Battle of Endor. They just sort of stumble onto it before the Rebels get there. And you remember from the movie. Uh, uh, Palpatine specifically tells Vader to wait on the command ship until Luke is there, right? He does, yeah. So that's actually what saves him, because, well, you can read the lore entries on the website, but basically, uh, they destroy the Death Star, and Vader takes the opportunity to claim the Empire as his own, which act he's actually wanted to do if you read some of the books. Absolutely, and, and, and of this is part of the five. reason that Izanazad has been relegated to the role of one of the Warlords, as opposed to actually um, head of the Galactic Empire. Yeah, she tries to assassinate Vader because, yeah, yeah that's yeah, does. Bad idea. doesn't go too well. Yeah, bad idea, but... <laughs> But it's really nice that you've, you've actually dangerous. you've made that lore and that storyline up. Now I noticed that most of the um, the uh, militia that you find around planets at this point they uh, have been stock races. Uh, do you have any plans to include uh, more militia and different types of militia as time goes by? Oh, absolutely. Uh, 
you'll actually notice some of these uh, uh, industrial planets are long-range scouts I found. They have Imperial Militia. Uh, every Terran and industrial planet actually will have uh, the Empire owning them already. I see, and... Uh... And then most of the other ones will have, uh, once they're in various combinations of... Uh, sort of rebel-based militia ship, or even Mandalorians. Ah, Mandalorians could be very, very interesting. Um, <clears throat> do you already have a, a concept for the Mandalorians, uh, ship design-wise? Because it's it's far out of the the time scale uh, of what we accept to be Mandalorian vessels. Well, I mean, uh, I don't actually like uh, the Forces of Corruption storyline very much from Empire at War, but you will see a lot of the ships that the Zon Consortium had that were of Mandalorian origin oh, will I see. be in the mod. Uh, they're going to actually replace the pirates. That, that sounds like a good call to me. Uh, they, they were always kind of a, an opportunist piratical faction that were just simply looking for battle in it. It makes sense from the... Um, Certainly from... at this point in uh, galactic history, yeah, you know, Mandalorians have been mainly bounty hunters for a very long time, so... Oh dear, I, speaking of pirates... Gunship reporting! <laughs> Can we find them? Oh, yeah. They're at my homeworld. <laughs> oh, I didn't even realize we had a raid sent on you. Sadly, um. nor did I. <laughs> well, <laughs> well played, me. <laughs> well, it's alright. At some point, uh, this Golan 3 will be constructed, and I will be saved. Get my ships back. Get my ships back. <laughs> Planet development finished. Now, what else do we have here? Um, a lot of the research, I believe, is is uh, shared with the Galactic Empire uh, for the uh, Warlords faction. Is that correct? Yep, a good chunk of it. Like just like the Vanilla Sins, uh, Loyalist and Rebel factions, the Galactic Empire and the Warlords are still the same base faction. Pretty much all the smaller ships are the same, but there are definitely a few differences. Uh, all of the research that's like sort of uh, has that white glow around it is unique to them. Are being right. Some of them you may need to have joined a faction first, but other ones are available to all, no matter who you join. That's like good. The black market technology and the civic tree is probably the earliest thing you can get. That mm -hmm. allows your research labs to research complete. generate credits. I see. Now I'm just hovering over one here called Fondor Technicians, which requires you to be a member of Warlord Zinji's yep. faction. Now I'm going to show uh, yeah, the ladies actually... and gentlemen how you would go um, about doing this, just very, very briefly. It requires you to be a captain, as you can see in this uh, little information board here. So you would have to have researched a couple of extra times um, in your uh, in your rank. Once you reach rank captain, you can choose any of these uh, particular Warlords to join. Uh, so you research it like you would a normal piece of research and that will unlock certain pieces of research that might otherwise be unavailable to you depending on who you've called yep. good lord there's on preceptor attacking me in addition this is all very unacceptable a single purge vessel what were they thinking <laughs> those trolls i know it's just rude isn't it when I were a lad, the pirates there. When I oh. were a lad, <laughs> right. My ships have made it back to my home world, so I should, uh, I should deal with that in fairly short order. But I am seeing over here the Zom Precept is expanding pretty rapidly, so I might have to do a deep strike in the near future. Uh, see yeah. what I can do. The Advent are actually. Uh... Pretty strong in this mod because I've buffed culture substantially. So ah, so culture could be an well, issue. Now, one thing yeah, I, I've just... noticed is there's already culture emanating from my home world. Is that due to your um, do 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 your Sectomoth headquarters? If I can find it, that's the structure that spawns it. Yeah, but basically the idea was uh, it was actually an idea I borrowed from the. Maelstrom, I kind of liked how it worked with the culture starting very slowly from your homeworld. It oh, also uh, was a balance issue because the, the Advent were actually so good in E4X that uh, on small maps they would just totally overwhelm you with culture before you can even build your own culture centers. Ah, I see. So, so you were kind uh, of uh, you were looking to find a way to not lose any homeworlds due to culture. Yeah. So you have a bit of a cultural resistance on your original homeworld. Uh, that makes sense. 
do, 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 building lots and lots of golems. <laughs> Awaiting instructions. <clears throat> so the pirate threat has mainly been dealt with. I might uh send some spare credits your way. Help you deal with that mess. Oh, don't you worry. I have plenty of credits, sir. I don't spend money. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, a reasonably small pirate raid, so I'm, I'm kind of pretty un unconcerned about Reporting it at this point. In. There's quite a few of them, but uh, they ain't going to do anything bad to me. We're in attack position. Yeah, the... what is it? Yeah, it's a low raid, so they didn't even come with siege vessels. That's right, fortunately. And I do have a goal and ready now, so... That's going to give me a little bit of fighter support. Let's have a look in our defense tree and see what we can do. We can have a repair yard and prefabricated garrisons. Uh, that actually sounds extremely useful. That's going to allow us to um, build up... If I go into our develop planet tree, it's going to allow us to uh, develop our emergency facilities at uh, reduced cost. So I think that's something worth taking. Attack that target. <clears throat> also, uh, I guess one thing I didn't get to mention when I was talking about the warlords earlier. Uh, if you go to the Diplomacy, which is in this case called the Allegiance Tree. Uh, there it you is. can see the your race and your faction have some very uh, specific bonuses that you get at the start of the game without needing to research them. Oh, I see. Yes, that's it. There and they are. Um, for this Warlord faction, the... we have a uh, little bit less fleet supply, uh, but a little bit more research upgrade and antimatter. Uh, yeah, so they are all about uh, sort of the gameplay wise, they're the quickly get to the end of the tech tree race. You know, they can research things for 25% cheaper, much faster. Your research labs are actually at only half price. Oh, that's extremely useful for them. So, um, yeah. so you, you've gone research over overall fleet, so you kind of, you want less vessels, but to be initially a little bit more powerful than perhaps other empires might be, uh, per yeah. individual vessel. And the idea is, you know, since these are all warlords, you know, they're not really uh, legitimate rulers, so they um, don't have the resources of the main empire, but... Uh, so they don't have access to the vast logistical network that the full yeah. empire would have had previously. Yep, they makes perfect sense. They don't have the core sense. worlds, they don't have the shipyards of Kuat, they don't have any of that. They're mostly on the Outer Rim or the Unknown Regions, in the case of Thrawn. So, uh, yeah, they can't build as much ships, but... Uh, some of their research is really good, like, uh, you might notice at the end there, you get some unique things like Tide Defenders, uh, you can get a systems redesign to give you much better stats on all your ships, uh, cloning that can somewhat, uh, make up for your low, uh, fleet supply at the very end of the Civic Tree. Mm-hmm. Ready for orders, sir. And then, of course, you get some more conventional benefits, like, bringing out things like the galaxy gun easier, a bit like the... Ah, the galaxy gun. Um, yeah. Now, super weapons are something I'm always I'm really reluctant about. Um, things like the Novalith cannon. I, I always found them really challenging and difficult. Have you uh, done anything with those that kind of offsets the mentalness of them at all? Uh, directly, no, but uh, keep in mind, since this is uh, built on E4X, all the little add-on mods I release will work for them, so you can just disable them all if you don't like them. Oh, but, that's, uh, see, no, that's very app. interesting. That's the um, E4X optional mini-mods. Um, yes. Uh, that particular download I, I do use in my own personal build, uh, just because I, I find the, the super weapons to be quite difficult to deal with, uh, particularly if you're uh, facing off against a, a very hard enemy. They'll build a load of those, and you'll just, you just won't know whether you're coming or going unless you've got them first. Yeah. Yep, so... Oops, I don't want to specialize. Uh, Alright, let's get another couple of these bad boys so my planet can't be sieged easily. There we go. And we are going to send my... Oh dear, my remaining vessels over to Armand, which is now under siege from the Zon Precept. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> They are not messing around today. Fortunately, I have to uh, go through that industrial planet to try and uh, get to you, so... 
Oh, don't you worry about that. God, you've expanded like a rash. You're doing well. Structure complete. Well, mind you, I you suppose you would. You, you would know your own game. <laughs> well, actually, it's not even that. I think uh, when Rebellion was first released for maybe nine months or so, I was actually playing multiplayer somewhat regularly. So, oh, I see. You learn to be much faster if you try that. I would imagine so. Yeah. Because you will be totally owned in 25 minutes if you try to uh yeah i mean unfortunately for me yeah. as you can imagine the the chief mod that i play is uh star trek armada uh yeah. and as a result i might be a lot slower than some other players in the initial build-up just because it's not quite as necessary oh my god i'm already getting culture bombed <laughs> this is going well <laughs> <laughs> Right, we're gonna have to think about some culture. Our fleet is under attack. Get one of those. Sure you don't want some resources. I'll be fine. The Zom precept ain't the boss of me. <laughs> Planet development. I realize it may appear that they are. Preparing for hyperspace jump. Well, only if you happen to live on uh, a mud or whatever it's called. So uh, my fleet is arriving. Desert. Just gonna have to take this purge vessel, and uh, then hopefully we'll be okay. I can get on the offensive. Intel reports an impending pirate raid. Oh, Intel reports an impending pirate raid. Of course it bloody does. Research complete. <laughs> the price on our head has increased. Just gonna keep an eye on the uh, the price on our head at the moment. Yep. One thing that I have noticed there is. Um, just to the left, uh, and this is a bit of foreshadowing there, on the um, next to the pirate raiding section, that's a Mandalorian sigil, isn't it? Yes, it is. Cruiser reported. This is actually, uh, I finally found the texture file that uh, determines what the whole little uh, mini black market thing is. So ah, I yes. quickly rigged up a custom HUD for that. I'm not right, quite happy nice. with it yet, but yeah. Open fire. Yes, the pirates will eventually be Mandalorian, so that's why that's there. It's magnificent. I can hear some of the uh, the classic Star Wars music in the background as well. Mhm. Mm we have. Pirate raiders are on the loose. See, I don't know if I can give you an exact number, but it's a good chunk of music from all the films, and I think there are two that tracks from Kotor. One oh. of the various games. I, I did notice all... one track from Kotor, which was uh, uh, what a lot of people call the uh, the Sith Lords track. Yeah. Which is the old ooh, 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 yep, one. The classic <laughs> one, yes. I had to put that in there. I'm glad you did. It's, it's one of my favorites. Alright, let's put a bit more culture here. Make sure we don't get bombed any further on that. Right, my culture should be uh, sorting itself out now, so that's nice. Yep. Uh, we have relieved the siege on Amod, but we're still a little bit low on the amount of vessels that we can have, so we are going to allow ourselves to build another capital ship, I think. Are you going to try a Venator anytime soon? Uh, let me see, see what the research requirements are. You just need a warship reactivation in the civic tree. Uh, that, in the civic tree, you say? Worship yeah. reactivation is down here. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, let's take that. Let's take the Venator. And we can also build the Dreadnought Heavy Cruiser as a result. Uh, one other thing that you've included, uh, and this is in one of your news posts, so I won't be stepping on any toes uh, telling people about it, is you have included some gravity wells, random right. gravity wells, that have Katana fleet uh, vessels in oh, them. Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. That's part of the... You know, that's something E4X was known for, the random encounters I was mm -hmm. talking about earlier. So, naturally, we, now that we're in the Star Wars galaxy, I need to start adding some Star Wars themes on. <laughs> it's not a bad idea. So, yep, you can find the long-lost Katana fleet of Dreadnoughts, and if you're lucky, they can be a very big early game edge. Yeah, sadly, I haven't managed to find any yet, but perhaps I will later yeah. on. Well, they only appear on uncolonizable planets, so... We haven't actually have too much on this map. I, I see one asteroid belt and one wormhole. That's about it. Yeah, the asteroid belt is over here, and it doesn't appear to have any of Katana fleet on it where my scouts through went earlier. Yeah. So we may be missing out this particular time, but perhaps in the future when I play some more of this as we go along, uh, we will find a map that contains them. Oh, we know. Well, in, in, in fact, speaking of that, uh, 
I did find some the other day in a playthrough that I was doing personally. Uh, oh. Sadly, I, I, I didn't record that because uh, I was playing your beta build and I, I didn't really want to uh, record anything that I shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you for your caution. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> okay, it looks like the... Um, the Zom Precept is having a bit of a fight with some pirates here. So I'm going to wade in right up their bums uh, and see how that goes. Yeah, you might be able to uh, take out those carriers there. Fingers crossed. Nice in the back. Hopefully we're going to build some dreadnoughts shortly as well. Additional research required. What research do you require? Ah, it looks like I need the Duranium Reinforcement as well oh, yeah. in order to build these. Because they technically count as a heavy cruiser, so... Ah. I wanted them to be. I felt two labs Awaiting was a little bit Open fire. Uh, too early for them, but if you get two, you need two civic and two military labs, basically. Oh, I see. And since they're heavily armored vessels, I figured the armor would make Moving out. plenty of sense. Attacking target. Now, do all your Empire vessels have anti fighter capabilities? No. Right, don't uh, you? How about your cap ships the, specifically? The Titans do, but the cap ships no. Oh, I see. They need to rely on their Tie Fighter squadrons, which was basically what the real Empire did. I mean, you can shoot turbo lasers on them, but you rarely hit anything. So it would be a majestic idea for me to have some lances in my fleet. Yep, but since they seem to have carriers already, that might be a good idea. They certainly do. Which I'm, of course, delighted about. Out of the pirates there, since... Reporting in. They're now attacking you instead of the Zon Precept. I'm, I'm reasonably comfortable with that. Yeah, car acts are expendable, right? Oh, yes. Well, what I'm thinking of doing, actually, be is because this planet may well go down, I'm going to bring these back to my home Coming world. About. Keep this vessel Navigating here, and we're going to go and try and attack this uh, Sarapin, the ice planet next to me. Ah. Research complete. And hopefully we'll be getting a couple of dreadnoughts, etc, etc, as we go along. But I do need more, many, many more of my pieces of research done, so... Let's have a look at this Venator class. She's uh, finished being constructed. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Gotta love the classics. Yep. With a fresh, uh... I don't want to say fresh coat of paint, but freshly without painting, I guess, in the uh, Venator's case. Thank the good lord. I, I never really liked the, the red look. Yeah, well... You know, the Republic, they're the good guys. They have to make it all look colorful or something. <laughs> they have to know. be a little bit gaudy. <laughs> yep. What are the Republic doing? Ah, they're peacocking, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Got some Acclimator 2s. Acclimators are uh, specialized for planetary bombardment. Yep. Yeah, okay. Don't want any of those. The skip rays I found incredibly um, effective on my last playthrough, uh, early game, so mm -hmm. I'll, I'll have a few yeah. of those. Ten? Ten will do. Additional credits <laughs> required. Gunship reporting. Let's bring the fleets together. We're on our way. And then we're going to see if we can continue onwards. Hopefully the pirates will deal with uh, Krill Door for me. And even if they don't, uh, what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and come to Sarapin here, and then we are going to go to Elam and try and cut that particular planet off so we can take it at mm -hmm. our leisure, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, I think that's all we have time for for this episode. Um, so thank you very much for joining me, and thank you for explaining some of the ins and outs uh, of the game. Frigate standing by for no problem. And hopefully, ladies and gentlemen, I will speak to you all again soon. If you like the content that we have uh, made here today, please like and subscribe, and I will bring you some more. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.